Hi, my name's David Brown, and I have a passion for playing the drums. But I also have another passion, and that's education. And as a training engineer for Hawk Ridge Systems, I'm able to live that passion. This video is a result of when those two passions collide. I hope you enjoy it. I began the project by modeling up the components of the drums. In each of the components, the head, the rim, and the shell are actually used in all of the drums. And in each assembly, I have a range of configurations that represent the different sizes of the drum. This component is a clamp that clamps onto a cymbal stand and holds one of the smaller drums. And this has three different configurations in it because it could potentially be placed on one of three different sizes of tubes that are on the cymbal stands. The cymbals are also created with several different configurations for the different types of cymbals and the different size cymbals that are on there. And each of those have configurations as well. The snare drum here was one of the most challenging and detailed of all of the assemblies. And as you can see with the snare drum, I have the necessary motion that I need when positioning the snare drum within the context of the large final assembly with respect to the other drums. The clamp that holds the snare drum in place utilizes a screw mate and I can simulate the action of the linkage. I also used a layout sketch in an assembly to work out the action for the pedal system. So once the components then were assembled and created, then I can see that I do have the correct motion and functionality within the double bass pedal system. As you can see, I've applied materials and appearances to all of the components. And just having my real view graphics on and while I'm modeling, I can see a great deal of realism, in, including shadows. This subassembly is the mechanism that secures the clamp to the bass drum. And using a display mode, I can see the internal mechanism and that it is functioning properly. The uprights, I used multi-body part design to create the, the different uh, components of it. I have two different configurations, one for the right pedal assembly and one for the left pedal assembly. Once I had all of the components or all the sub-assemblies created, I turned those into blocks and then I took those blocks and I put them in a layout sketch in the top level assembly. And as I placed the individual sub-assemblies in this top level assembly, I mated the assemblies to the floor and then to the blocks in the layout sketch. Using this method, I can place all the, the different sub-assemblies or components of the drum kit and I can place them into this assembly and I can control the position, the orientation, and make sure that I don't have any interferences from one sub-assembly to the other. Just like I would do if I was getting ready to play a gig. Now that the drum kit is fully assembled, I can begin to add more realism to it. And what I've done here is I've just added some shadows and I've got real view graphics on. In the top level assembly, I've created several display states and I can display the drums with several different finishes. The next thing I did was model up the stage so I can create an environment that I can render. I created a basic section for a light cage and then I assembled that within the stage. 
The other thing I needed to do was have a simulation of lights. And what I did is I created a basic couple of parts here in an assembly that I can move and rotate. And then I added some display states that represent the different colors. As I assembled these, I placed the drum kit on the drum riser. I put in an array of the light cages. And as you can see, I've got lights pointing down at the stage. And the results in the rendering are spectacular. I hope you enjoyed that video. It's our goal at Huckridge Systems to bring our passion alive in the classroom to help you realize your dreams as well. See you in class.